Let's consider the problem 839C, Journey. Journey is a depth for search on trees problem. The problem statement is as follows. You're given a tree. A tree is a graph with n nodes and n minus 1 edges, such that for every pair of nodes in the graph, there's exactly one path that connects them. In this problem, n is up to 100,000. This suggests that we need an n or n log n algorithm, because the n squared algorithm will be too slow. You also have a journey. This journey starts at node 1, and it ends at a leaf node. For every path in the journey, you randomly decide which next node to go to. However, you do not go backwards. This means that you do not go back up to your parent node. You're supposed to output the expected length of a journey, given that each edge has a length of 1. So basically, how the expected number of edges that you traverse from node 1 to a leaf node. Let's consider what the expected length is. Now you can look this up on Wikipedia for a more concrete definition, but essentially it's a weighted average length. The higher probability of reaching a particular length, the more weight that that length would have in the average. So if there's 10 lengths or 10 ways you can get a length 2 and only one way to get a length 1, the way to get a length 1 might have less average or less weight in the average. Um, however, if the probability of reaching all the lengths of length 2 equals half, and the probability of reaching length 1 is also half, then they will have equal average, because the total weights of both the lengths are the same. We will get this better as we solve the problem. Essentially, what you're outputting is the sum of the length to i times the probability of ending at i for all the leaf nodes i. And again, you'll understand this better as we do an example. So let's look at the sample input. This is a tree, which has four nodes and three edges. We start at node 1. Node 1 um, has a 50% chance of going to node 3 and a 50% chance of going to node 2. There's a 0.5% chance of reaching node 3 and that path has a length of 1. From node 2, there's a 50% chance that we reach node 2 from node 1 and there's a 50% chance that we reach node 4 from node 1 because node 2 has to go down to node 1. There's no option for node 2. Is a 0.5 chance of reaching node 4, and this path has a length of 2. This means our output is 0.5 times 1 for node 3, because 0.5 probability, and the length is 1. And for node 4, there's a 0.5 probability of reaching it, and the length 2. So you add 0.5 times 1 plus 0.5 times 2, to get 1.5, which is the answer. Now we need to find the length from the start and the probability of reaching each node. So to find the length from the start, we need the length from the root node. This is essentially the depth of the node. Um, depth of 0 is 0, and again, instead of saying depth of 1 is 0, I'm converting it to depth of 0 is 0 because we're going to use 0 based indexing when we're coding it. So it's nice to start thinking about the problem in 0 based indexing right now. For every node that's not 0, the depth of that node is 1 more than the depth of its parent node. And parent node is the node above, the node that you come from. We can use depth first search to find all the depths because when we do depth first search, we always search the node above the node, the parent of the node, before we search the node itself. Now we need to find the probability of reaching the node. The probability of reaching node 0, which is the root, is 1 because we always start at node 0, hence we for sure reach node 0. If the probability of reaching a node is x, and the current node has y children, then this probability x will be split up amongst the y children. Because you will randomly travel from our current node, which let's call it node i, to one of the y children. So the probability of reaching each of those children is x over y. And we'll understand this better when we look at doing this specifically on input. We can also use DFS to solve this. So let's look at the DFS, and this will also help define more clearly what a parent is. So we start at node 1. We've already decided that the depth of node 1 is 0 because you traveled a length 0 to reach node 1 and the probability of reaching it is 1 because we for sure start there. And then we traverse to node 3. Now since node 3 is coming from node 1, the parent of node 3 is node 1. Um, node 1 also has two children, node 2 and 3, so we know that it's going to split up its probability of 1 into two parts. 
That means that node 3 has a probability of 1 divided by 2 equals 0. 0.5, and the depth is 1 because node 3 came from node 1 where the depth was 0, so we add 1 to the depth of 0 and we get 1. We now look for the nodes under node 3, and there are none. The only node 3 is connected to is node 1, which is the parent node. So we do not traverse back to the parent node. Since node 3 has no children, meaning no nodes underneath it, node 3 is a leaf node. And for leaf nodes, we add the probability of reaching the node times the depth to the answer. So our answer is now 0.5. Then we traverse to node 2. And again, as node 1 has, no, has two children, it splits up its probability of 1 in two parts. So node 2 now has a probability of 2 in the depth of 1. Because node 2 came from a node with a depth of 0, so this simply adds 1 to its parent node. The parent node's depth. So that's 0 plus 1 is 1. Um, then node 2 traverses to node 4. So since node 2 only has one child, its whole probability will be uh, moved, shifted to node 4. So the probability of node 4 will stay half because it's divided into one part. And node 4's parent is 2, since node two, 4 came from 2, which means that they add 1 to the depth of node 2 to get the answer. So they do 1 plus 1 equals 2. Now node 4 has no children underneath it, which means that node 4 is a leaf node. So we add 0.5 times 2 to the answer. And we get 1.5, which is the correct answer. Let's look at the runtime of this algorithm. We only search each node once, which suggests an O of n. We only look at each edge once, which is suggests an O of number of edges. Which, I mean, there could be lots of edges. However, in this problem, we have a tree, which means there are n minus 1 edges. So O of the number of edges equals O of n. So our overall runtime is O of n. And this works because n is 100,000. Let's now consider the memory. For each edge, we have to store all the, for each, sorry, for each node, we have to store all the adjacent nodes. This looks like O of n squared because each node could have a maximum of n adjacent nodes. However, it isn't because the total number of edges is n minus 1. So even if one node has n neighbors, this means that the rest of the nodes cannot have n neighbors. Total all of the nodes together have 2n neighbors because the edges are forward and backward. And 2n go transforms to O of n memory. This O of n memory, so this also works. The first thing we have to do is include everything. Include bit slash scdc plus plus dot h includes all the files. Files. We always use the standard namespace or namespace scd. The maximum value that n could possibly be in this problem is 100,000. So we set that to help us declare arrays later. We have an integer n, and our answer starts out at 0.0. .0. We also need to store the adjacency vectors, which is all the nodes that the current that each node is adjacent to. For example, adjacency of 0 is all the nodes that node 0 is connected to. We then have our main, as usual, and the first thing we do in our main is we read in our input. We have to read in all our edges, and so that's why we loop from i equals 0 to n minus 1. Recall that in this problem, we have a tree. That means that there are n minus 1 edges. We read in the two sides of the edge, and then we have to convert them from one based indexing over to zero based indexing. We simply subtract one from each. When we do adjacency of a dot pushback b, it adds b to all the nodes that a is adjacent to, and adjacency dot b dot pushback a adds a to all the nodes that b is connected to. So we have now connected nodes a and b with an edge. We then have to DFS to find our answer. So right now we're going to put DFS 0, 0, 1, and 0. But I'll explain that in a second once we create our DFS function. Now DFS will compute the answer, so we then have to print the answer. This problem wants us to print the answer with the accuracy of 10 to the negative 6. So we're going to set the precision of 7. And this will print out 7 decimal points. 
so that the accuracy will be within 10 to the negative 6. Now let's look at our DFS function. Our DFS function takes in our current location, the parent, um, the current probability to get to this node, and the depth. That's why when we originally call it, we call DFS 0, because we start at 0. 0 as a parent, 0 has no parent. 1 because the probability of reaching node 1 is 0, or sorry, is 1, and 0 because the depth of node 0 is 0. The first thing we need to do is count how many below nodes are underneath the current node. So we loop to all the nodes in our adjacency vector, and this is a for each loop. And either the node is our parent or it is beneath us. So if it's not our parent, then it has to be beneath us which means we add one to the count of how many nodes are below us. And this count starts at zero, of course. So now we know how many nodes are below us. Now we have to loop through all the nodes that are below us and split, split the current the probability of the current node between all the nodes that are below us. We're again going to use a for each loop to do this. We're going to check to make sure that it's not our parent, because if it's not our parent, then it's necessarily below us. And then we're going to DFS, the node is i, the parent is our current node, because they're coming from our current node. The probability is our probability divided by below, and the depth is our current depth plus 1. Now this will never divide by 0, because in order to do this loop, below has to be at least 1. We also have to see if the current node is leaf. So if below equals 0, then the current node is a leaf. So we add the um, probability of reaching this current node times the depth to our answer, and we're done.